Hi, I'm Don Goldberg for TechView, and we're on location today uh, with Cisco at its Herndon, uh, Virginia offices with our friend, Senior Vice President Bruce Klein for Public Sector. And Bruce, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us, I should say. It's good, it's good to have you. So here we are at uh, the beginning of the year, 2010. What's on the horizon for Cisco and the public sector? Well, I, you know, I think that uh, what's on the horizon is the, the what we're working on is looking at what's the next generation internet and how's that going to apply to the big problems that we're dealing with in public right. sector. And if you think about it, that's where Cisco is really focused. Looking at how do we create that next generation internet where you move from first generation data transport where the internet was really about moving data mm -hmm. to a rich media platform where it's going to be about video and it's going to be about collaborating differently with rich media. Uh, you look at messaging, which started out as email, and that's going to move to real collaboration where we're going to start seeing the social networking concepts as well as your enterprise desktop come together as one personalized desktop for you. Mm -hmm. We're seeing discussions around price performance move to discussions around sustainability. And on, a, on the data center side, we're looking at these vertically horizontal architectures becoming these virtual distributed architectures. And that kind of leads to, that's where Cisco's strategy is, to lead in those areas in data center mm -hmm. virtualization and the movement to secure cloud, to move to a network that is borderless, to let information sharing flow and think about agencies right. that want to have this agency, interagency collaboration, and um, to think about from a collaboration standpoint, you know, how do you and how do agency heads take all this myriad of information they get, put it together in terms of data that they can make quicker decisions on. So we, we see that as, as the, the big movement where we're going to play the biggest play and where we think we can have the biggest impact in federal agencies and state and local agencies. So it sounds like that a lot of what you're talking about is collaboration and using the network, using the internet, using technology for agencies to really talk to each other internally, externally, whatever it might be, but collaboration. Who's doing that well and who are you working with that uh, has shown some real exciting uh, progress on that? Well, there's a, there's a lot of different things going on. So if I, if I take one example of interagency collaboration. You know, NOAA, we were working with NOAA. Mm -hmm. NOAA was doing a lot of modeling around climate change. Sure. And uh, they were doing it within NOAA. What they wanted to do is really expand that discussion and get into scientists and educators and engineers that are in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. So we were able to take, take their network, build up their network, and connect it with the scientific and education networks that are out there in the regions. And now they can start having conversations about high-performance computing with scientists and engineers that are bringing innovation and ideas and new creativity to their problems. So it sounds like some people get it. Um, this administration clearly has made this a priority. What's the cultural change in the agencies you need to get for people to really understand how valuable this is? I, I think the cultural change is all about the opening up. We talk about information sharing, but the actual ability to do interagency collaboration, breaking down the silos mm -hmm. of what's my information and what should be shared is something that I think the government is working through right now. Mm -hmm. And they're making progress. I think it's an evolution that's beyond the technology. It comes down to the people side of it, the process side of it. But more and more, we're seeing agencies and, and more problems that they're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. You think about uh, food safety and drug safety and, and all the different agencies that need to collaborate on, on that, or a, a pandemic, um, and it's what CDC and who they need to communicate mm -hmm. with. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we've worked right now on connecting CDC with the Mexican government around H1N1. Right. Uh, those sort of connections are starting to play now. So as these new opportunities or crises come about, mm -hmm. it's bringing people more to the forefront of we've got to do it and we've got to do it now. And how important do you think uh, the cloud is to agencies being able to move in the right direction, to not have to cobble together their own systems, but basically let you do that? You know, I, I think it has a lot of promise. I mean, th there again, there you've got um, a lot of discussion around cloud right now. And I think what we see the agencies really looking at is, you know, within cloud or as X as a service, mm -hmm. you know, there's different models of infrastructure as a service, which is more of the hardware. Right. And then there's software as a service. We see more plays 
it's easier right now to do infrastructure as a service because they still have to work and companies have to work on the model for enterprise licensing and software as a service. Sure. And the whole security aspect of cloud is being discussed very heavily today. Uh, but what we see is a more of a, uh, kind of a phased approach where we're going to see more private clouds. Mm -hmm. So within an agency, they'll, they'll consolidate and have a cloud within a particular agency right. before they move to public clouds where then it's interagency because of security issues and the things they have to work on and what information should they share, could they share, uh, and what are they willing to give up and how secure is it. So we see that as kind of an evolution. So that gives them a secure uh, way to, to approach the cloud without losing the confidence that they're outside of their own protective. The private wall. clouds do, yeah. absolutely. And so uh, is the, is the, are smaller, are state governments or state and local governments following the feds or are they leading in some cases or what's your experience uh, with the entire public sector? Well, I think they're all, they're all looking at it. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, like in higher education, we see a little bit more of a lead because they don't have necessarily the security concerns as sure. the federal government. Right. So we see the movement of taking student email and productivity applications and putting it on a cloud. Because that, one, is much less expensive for the student, and it takes the whole administration of that environment out of a higher education institution. So we see some movement to the cloud, on, and that software as a service piece happening quicker in, in higher education, even in K through 12, than we do yet in the federal government. Because the federal government really has to deal with the security issues. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great challenge you have for the year, and I think it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to watch how well the government sort of understands how to move that direction. And look forward to having you back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Don Goldberg for TechView.